Thanks for the introduction, Sarah. Um, my name is Trikvi, uh, and you can follow along on speaker deck if you want to. I put the slides, uh, you can see the link there. It's just the same as my Twitter handle. Uh, and the title of the talk is, This Will Flow Your Mind. And this talk is actually nested. It has a sub-talk in it. The thing is that I found this one weird trick while making this talk. Uh, and speakers will hate you for it. It's how to find a title for your talk. Step one, go to punchgenerator.org. Look at the list and find something that you like. Uh, other notable candidates were flow your own trumpet and flow in the towel. <laughs> so, step three is profit. Thank you. But let me fork back to the original talk now. So, we've been using Flow at Quizlet for over half a year, so we have kind of, we have we've seen some of its ups and downs. And I'll go into what it actually is in a moment, but first I just want to briefly go over the structure of the talk. The talk is very linear. It's split into five sections, and first it's just a short introduction, then a really shallow dive under the hood. Then I'll showcase some of the features that Flow can do and some of its limitations. And lastly, I'll just go over the lessons, some of the lessons we learned and kind of our experiences using it. So how many of you have heard about Flow? Okay, a fair amount. Awesome. So for those of you who don't know, Flow is a static type checker for JavaScript. It was open sourced by Facebook in November of 2014. And that's their logo there. It's kind of made out of these modules of triangles, kind of. And it's written in OCaml, and it's maintained by a team of around five to seven people. Here you can see the contributions to master on the GitHub repository since initial commit. And it's kind of interesting to compare that to React. Uh, Flow is a little bit more than half younger than React. The red line represents the lifetime of Flow. And we can see that React really goes out with a, a big bang. And the Christmas months are like really busy. On the other hand, Flow has this huge spike in contributions, but then just kind of goes into hibernation for a few months. But it's been picking up a lot of steam lately. And over the last six months, Flow has actually been more actively developed than React in terms of contributions to master. And to compare Flow and React again for no good reason, uh, let's look at the punch cards of the projects. We can see that Flow contributors really hate contributing on Sunday mornings and they ship the hardest on Fridays. But all nonsense aside, what 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 is this? What, what does it do? How does it work? So imagine that the blue dots are JavaScript files, or modules, if you will, uh, interconnected and depending on each other. What Flow does is it looks at those files, parses them, and creates from the raw source code this kind of format that it understands. And once all of the files have been parsed in this way, we end up with what is called a flowchart. And using the flowchart and this special format, Flow notes down what your code is doing. For example, what types go into functions and come out of functions, either by inferring them or getting hints from developers. What kind of hints am I talking about? The hints are the type annotations that you put to the parameters and return types of functions. Here you can see that the num parameter has been annotated to be a number, and the return type of this function must always be a string. This is an example of a function that Flow can fully understand. Flow is an opt-in tool, so we put this special line at the top of files that we want to enable type checking in. This way, it's really easy to incrementally type check a large code base that can be really important and even vital to some projects. You might have noticed that this isn't actually valid JavaScript code. If you try to run this, you'll get a syntax error. And that's because of the type annotations. 
But luckily, Flow supports type annotations inside of comments. So the below function is actually valid JavaScript, and you can run that. But most projects nowadays use some kind of transpilation step. So it's really easy to just strip the type annotations from the above function with something like Babel preset react or flow remove types. But why would we want to do this? We have to type more, as in typing on our keyboards. Uh, we have, we're adding restrictions to the code. Uh, isn't the point of dynamic languages to be fast to develop in and flexible? And these questions kind of bring us to the next chapter of the talk, which is why you should use it. Let me make it clear that type checking might not be useful in all projects. If the project is small scoped or short lived, it doesn't really benefit as much from type checking. That being said, Flow is an opt-in tool, so it's really easy to just type check a few files and then go about your business. One of the most compelling reasons to use type checker is bug prevention. This function should always return an object no matter what it gets. If it gets an object, it should return that object. Else, it should return an empty object. But this function has a classic JavaScript bug in it. Can anyone see it? Take a sec. Yeah, null, right. So in JavaScript, null is actually an object. So if we would pass null to this function, it would go through it unharmed. It wouldn't resolve to an empty object like we expect it to. So how we go about fixing this? We could just add a simple null check. But this is exactly the kind of errors that Flow can help you find. If we would have added type annotations to this function, Flow would have told us, hey, this thing you're doing right here is not OK. You have to check for null. Notice the type annotation on the x parameter has a question mark in front of it. And that tells Flow that x might be an object, but it could also be null or undefined. So it's kind of a maybe object. Other cases for using a static type checker other than bug prevention like this are auto-completion and refactoring tools, as well as dead code elimination. Not all of those have been implemented into useful tools backed by Flow, but auto-completion has, and I'll go over that in a sec. So what can it do? It can do auto-completion. <laughs> so this is a Redux action creator. Uh, it might provide some context to those of you who know Redux, but it's not important for this, this example. We're importing action types from another file, and the action types are fully, un Flow fully understands these action types. It knows all of the properties on the object and the types of those properties. Here I'm using a plugin called Nuclide for the Atom text editor. Uh, it's it's developed by Facebook, and it heavily integrates with Flow. It can provide type checks on save and inline errors, just like ESLint, uh, and also type coverage. So it can show you which types Flow can infer and which ones it doesn't really understand. Once we start typing the action types, we can see that we get auto-completion for all of the properties. And here I try to access the error and throw, and I can see that there are strings. And this autocompletion applies to all JavaScript native objects and all imports of libraries that you have definitions for. Flow has great support for a lot of new JavaScript features, and it ships with support for native node libraries and native JavaScript, JavaScript objects. There is an official repository that is trying to gather all of this, these uh, type signatures for all kinds of libraries. You can also write your own. It's also possible to do a little bit more complex things with type parameters. So the big R and the big U here are just placeholders for some type that you will pass into this type. This is 
a type which describes an object which has a then method that behaves exactly like the then method of a promise. So it's kind of like an object which, which is promise-like. It behaves a little bit like a promise. And another thing that Flow supports really well is React. React is also developed by Facebook, so naturally Flow can understand a lot about React code. Let's look at one example of how, how Flow can help React developers. So Flow can actually replace the, the React prop types type checking, the, run, the runtime type check that React, you, can, you can do with React. So you can, you can throw away the, the runtime type checking in favor of static type checking. Here you can see a coffee image component which only has one prop. It's format, and it can either be PNG or JPEG. So if we start to use the coffee image in our application, and we pass it a format, and if we give it something else, like a GIF, we'll get an inline error. And the error says that this string isn't in the, the string item that you told me the format is. So this can be really useful. Just for completeness sake, we could have implemented coffee image as a stateless component and Flow has support for that as well. So what can't it do? This section is pretty short and pretty specific. It can't warn about additional properties declared on a component's prop type. This is an example of what I'm talking about. We have a hello component, which only has one prop, name. And if we invoke it with another property like age, we don't get an error at all. This is something that the Flow team is looking into and will probably be improved uh, in the near future. The root cause of this is that Flow doesn't really support exact object. I'm kind of going to skip this slide, but I want it in the, in the slide deck so you can look at it later if you want to. Another thing that is problematic with Flow are non-native data structures. And what I mean by non-native data structures are data structures that don't behave like normal JavaScript uh, native data structures, like array and object. For example, we're using immutable JS a lot. And it's really difficult to model immutable data structures in Flow. I think it's mainly because of how the API is constructed. If you're going to access a property deep down in an object, you have to give it a key path, which is an array of strings. And it's really hard to model that. But the good news is that in a recent QA, the Flow, Flow team revealed that better support for immutability is in the works. Again, I'm kind of going to skip this slide. This is, this is how we're doing it right now. Uh, it's not really that good. Uh, and you can see the, the key array. I was talking about the key path on line 14. Again, I'm going to skip this slide. You can look at it later if you want to. This is the last section of the talk. Uh, I'll go over some of the lessons learned and kind of our experiences using Flow. So the first point I want to make is that it's super easy to start using in an existing project. We have internal tools that mount to about 60,000 lines of JavaScript code. And we started type checking just a few files to see how it felt. And Flow even caught some existing errors while we were integrating it into our, our, our code base incrementally that would have just w were there since the beginning. And sometimes it doesn't really make much sense to type check. For example, functions which do really basic operations. Flow can usually infer the types of those functions. So here's an example of a function that Flow can fully understand. It can infer the type of the parameter and the, and the return type of the function. And Nuclide can really help you here. Nuclide is the plugin for the Atom text editor. And it can highlight which parts of the JavaScript file Flow can infer and which ones you can't. Try to avoid type laziness. It can be really tempting sometimes to just write object when you're describing a type instead of creating a more descriptive type that conveys more information to Flow. This has happened to us on several occasions, and, 
and it really diminishes the benefits of static type checking. So try to avoid doing this and do this instead. Notice the difference in the parameter type annotation. Adding type annotations in some cases has made our code a little bit more understandable and readable. Uh, and it's, when you're looking at code that someone, somebody else wrote, it kind of takes just a little bit less mental power to understand what's, what's going on. A lot of healthy discussion has also uh, surfaced as an effect of using the flow type system. For example, in code reviews, questions like, should this be able to return undefined, or should this parameter be optional, are discussed. So it really has a positive effect on code quality. So to sum it up, Flow has been a great success at QuizUp. It's really improved our development experience by a lot, and I recommend using that you should try it out if you're maintaining a JavaScript code base. And I hope some of this stuff blew your mind, but just in case that no one's mind was blown, I'm going to blow this one. So, <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs>